Okay, let's talk about acetylcholine in the central nervous system. Um, it turns out that acetylcholine, of course, has significant peripheral you know, involvement, right, at the neuromuscular junction, uh, and also at the autonomic nervous system, but it's also located centrally in two main sources. So if we look at our brain here, in the brain stem, there is a source of acetylcholine releasing neurons. These are the cell bodies of the neurons whose axons are gonna project out and go to the thalamus and at the axon terminals here, will release acetylcholine on cells of the thalamus. Remember that the thalamus is a centrally located brain structure, right, that receives information from the eyes, the ears, the body, you know, sensory information that's heading on the way to the cortex. And this is sort of the last processing site, subcortical processing site, before information gets sent to various regions of, you know, the cerebral cortex. Um, so this is one source, a brainstem source of acetylcholine. There's a second source in the central nervous system. It's an area a little bit further, you know, towards the frontal lobe here, um, in an area called the basal forebrain. The basal forebrain actually sends projections. So here again are the neuron cell bodies of neurons that will release acetylcholine in the central nervous system. And their axons will project out pretty widespread. But there are some selective targets that are quite important for certain cognitive functions. Um, in particular, um, there's a projection from the basal forebrain into the hippocampus, right, along the medial temporal lobe. The hippocampus is part of the limbic system, you know, part of the brain that's important for emotional experience and expression, but it has a particular role in memory, okay? So acetylcholine has a significant role in memory. 